Good morning, Anna. At long last, we have some scientists who are able to demonstrate good science to prove anomalous phenomena is potentially real. That's the significance of what Dr. Jim Segala tells me on this week's Reality Check. Yes, and Dr. Jim Segala, he's been featured on the hit show Skinwalker Ranch, which a lot of our viewers are, are familiar with. What are some of the otherworldly reports he's actually been able to verify with that proof and evidence? Well, a lot of it is people were, it's very clever. A lot of people were reporting phenomena. And one of the great dilemmas is everybody, the debunkers always say, where's the evidence? How do you prove this? And so what Jim conceived was a system where he set up a system of sensors called MUPAS, which are essentially a, a, a looking for all the kind of different things that might happen during anomalous phenomena. Gamma radiation, electromagnetic radiation, gravitometers, changes in gravity. And he measured those with a sensor that the person who was experiencing this phenomena didn't know what it was recording. And they were writing down in a book at exactly the right time when they were experiencing things like UFOs, when they were having weird poltergeist phenomena in their house. And the incredible thing that Jim has discovered, which I think is potentially very scientifically significant, is that he was able to predict with an incredible accuracy of 4.8 sigma, which is a very high degree of accuracy, when these anomalous events were going to occur based on what the signals were showing in the wow. sensors that he'd set up. So for the first time, you've got a link between what people are saying they're experiencing, ghosts, poltergeist phenomena, even aliens, people reporting experiences with non-human entities. And this is being recorded by them in a diary, in a book, and at the same time, this scientist is picking up this phenomena on the sensor systems that he's created and installed in their homes. Well, it's just fascinating. It makes the, the hair on your arms stick up a little bit. Uh, let's take a listen. I want to hear from him. How does Dr. Segala describe how UAPs could leave a magnetic footprint and how he collects data? Let's hear from him. Have you been anywhere where a craft or some kind of UAP has whizzed by and you've seen a change in a magnetic field or any other of these correlative sensor data sets? So now, after we've done this for, we started in, say, 2018, we've done this for quite a, quite a bit of time now. And I think at this point, we have over 600 instances where we have something verified out in the environment that we've recorded either video or seen through you know, cell phones or something like that. And at the same time, recorded something with the equipment that allowed us to correlate those two together. And then on top of that, um, looking back at the people, having them report that within some period of time afterwards, they would have some type of change to their body that indicated that something energetic went by them. We've done this for quite a, quite a bit of time now. And I think at this point, we have over 600 instances where we have something verified out in the environment that we've recorded either video or seen through, you know, cell phones or something like that. And at the same time, recorded something with the equipment that allowed us to correlate those two together. And then on top of that, looking back at the people, having them report that within some period of time afterwards, they would have some type of change to the body that indicated that something energetic went by them. There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. Welcome back, Crusher Crew. This is a special post, uh, an experiment that we're doing called by location. It is a remote viewing or out of body travel experiment that I've had a lot of requests and people ask me, even when I went over recently to Hestelin, Norway, people asked me if I used the modular sensor to check to see if I could do out of body experiences. So. After the incident, I typed up this report. I said, I've had several people ask me if I have done an out-of-body experiment with the MUPAS sensor. The concept is to do a meditation and during that process, see if I can touch the sensor and cause a change in the data. 
So I just completed a 45 minute long meditation. I used the gateway protocol mixed with a uh, reverse remote viewing methodology and sort of an out of body travel methodology all blended together. So in the first 15 minutes is all set up and preparatory as part of the meditation. And then I felt like I was successful at about the 15 through the 20 minute mark, according to my own judgment, that's about how long it takes me to get into the mode. And then that's where I had the first results. So this part of the, the data right here, I've sped up to 400 times speed. It's normally uh, a lot slower than this. And so I've sped up this segment of the data collecting. And I wanted to take this time to basically tell you again about what the MUPOS device is. It stands for the Modular Unidentified Phenomena Alert System. This is a system and a website built by Dr. Jim Sagala. He was the lead uh, physicist and engineer uh, at the uh, Skinwalker Ranch in Vernal, Utah. And so he was part of the whole experiment and worked as an intern under physicist Hal Putoff. Hal Putoff is basically been involved in the UFO topic. He invented remote viewing and even named it remote viewing. So everybody who calls it remote viewing is because of Hal Putoff. And Dr. Jim Sagala is the lead physicist and engineer, the scientist who built this device. And I am part of phase two of this modular unidentified phenomena alert system study. Phase one of the study went all the way to Washington, D.C. and was part of uh, the book Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. Talked about Hal Putoff uh, in that book and how the transient hitchhiker effect of the phenomena, people who have worked or visited Skinwalker Ranch or who have had encounters with unidentified phenomena, have these tracers or markers of things that seem to follow them home they call the hitchhiker effect. And so the process of this study is, can they build sensitive equipment that can not only catch the UAPs or UFOs in the sky, but can catch the data and record the data live as it happens when the effect enters a person's home or affects the individual directly. And so can you capture the spikes in microwave or gamma wave radiation? Can you have a sensor check and measure fluctuations in the infrasound, which is like atmospheric pressure in, in the home? Can you uh, overlap that with the experiencer of the person as it's happening to where they can line that up with the data on the sensor to what they experience in their home? So a common experience for me is to have like a sleep paralysis incident, and then we will catch that data on the sensor as a spike in gamma rays or in microwave or EMF energy. So now we're going to go back to real time on the sensor. And this is actually about 15 minutes into the meditation, even though it's only about five minutes in the video. So I've sped that earlier section up to get to where the data was. So at this point in my meditation, I'm in my bedroom. I have headphones on. I'm listening to binaural music that I've created myself that is actually 11 hours long. And it is a meditation music that harmonizes the left and right hemispheres of my brain and helps me go through the visualization process to do this out of body travel experiment. So in the meditation, I go do this energy clearing at like a magical box that I imagine in my mind where I put my problems into. And then I go through a whole process where I basically count myself from one up to 10. And then I go a little bit higher than that up to 11. And then there's a moment there where I kind of detach my consciousness, um, uh, disassociate. And then there's a process that I go through where I sort of project myself out of body. And it's like I am my consciousness and my awareness and everything is not in the bedroom or in my body, but is somewhere else. And so in, for this experiment, um, the, the goal is to bilocate or to feel like I'm actually standing somewhere that my body is not. And for this experiment, that was in my kitchen 
of trying to focus my attention and my energy and imagine myself touching the modular sensor. And this is the moment on the sensor when I did that, right at the 15 minute mark. So between 15 and 20 minutes on the MUPAS sensor, right when in my meditation in the bedroom, I vividly was visualizing as though I was having an out of body experience that I was standing in my kitchen, focusing all my attention on the modular sensor. And there we have a spike uh, that goes up at the same time in microwave energy as it does in the gamma rays as well. And I'm also going to check some of the other settings to see because uh, this is actually a screen recording. So what I did was before I went in and started my meditation, I opened up this website to the MUPAS portal and logged in. I went to the real-time data logging and then I screen captured it and I went in the bedroom, started the meditation and recorded for 45 minutes while I did the meditation. So this is the actual real-time data screen of as it happened at 15 minutes into the meditation. There you see the microwave fluctuation on top of a gamma ray spike right there. So the entire rest of the time, you have nothing going on. And then right when I was focusing my consciousness to go out of body and to visualize as though I'm standing at the MUPAS sensor and affecting it with my consciousness, uh, we get a spike in the gamma rays, which is to me, substantial and significant. And then also you see a huge spike again at the end when I, I sort of like drifted a little bit in my attention and then I refocused really hard and was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to affect the sensor. And then look at how it flatlined all the microwave data and we got a massive spike uh, right there. So between 15 minutes uh, to 20 minutes and that five minute gap when I really had my attention focused, we definitely got a spike in both the gamma rays and the microwaves. So the EMF and the gamma somehow go together. And it seems like in experiment one, I was able to actually affect the sensor with my mind, with a focused meditation. So this idea of being able to remote view or communicate at a distance, we can do these experiments and try to validate. Maybe this is how contact with the phenomena actually works. The consciousness is able to extend as a waveform or a frequency outside of the brain and the body and connect to things that are receptive on the same wavelength outside of ourselves. If we have these sensitive MUPAS sensors, apparently it appears that at least in this first experiment, like everybody's been wanting me to do, uh, if you do the right protocol, it seems like you can focus your consciousness and the sensor perceives that as a gamma ray spike and an EMF field spike that could also be misinterpreted as supernatural or poltergeist phenomena. Is it possible that by going to places like Skinwalker Ranch or to these other locations where paranormal activity seems to be heightened, that really what's going on is the energy of these places, somehow these quantum fields or somehow some type of radiation that we don't understand is sort of absorbing into certain individuals like a capacitor or like a battery. And then you're able to carry that around and discharge it through meditation or through amplified coincidence experiences. And that is measured as some kind of a strange phenomena that we can't explain. Because as far as we know in science, a human being should not be able to produce a gamma wave or a gamma radiation spike just by thinking about it. Gamma rays are supposed to be sort of a celestial radiation that comes from outer space and that you can't fake that. So to get a gamma ray spike right at the same time as a major flat line and a big spike in EMF and microwave. And that is at exactly the same time as I'm live capturing, trying to do the experiment where I'm trying to affect the sensor and that exact same way, just using my mind. To me, that's very strange. This is going back to the same experiments that they were doing at the Stanford Research Institute with Yuri Geller with uh, Ed Dames, with uh, Ingo Swan, Hal Putoff, Russell Targ, all of the founders, uh, Paul Smith, 
who actually lives close to where I live here in Utah, uh, all of these early remote viewers, um, they combined in with the Gateway program that the CIA knows works. They've released and publicized um, about the Gateway protocol and experience as an explanation for how reality works and how the universe works through consciousness. And so I think that we're just beginning to understand that. I think it's a really amazing opportunity to be able to work directly with Dr. Jim Segala and to be able to have the opportunity to do these experiments from home and record them and share them. And then this data will go back to Dr. Segala and be part of the evidence that goes back to Washington, D.C. that potentially becomes a part of actual official disclosure. Uh, evidence of the human evolutionary potential to be able to do things beyond what we normally thought were capable just through focused meditations. And so here we are again through the MUPAS portal um, running these experiments and starting to line things up to prove that physical reality is not exactly what we were taught in school, or at least we've got big gaps missing in it. And especially where we are headed as human beings and what this means about us. Can we uh, affect our reality around us just by thinking about it? Is our physical reality actually more quantum entangled with our thoughts and emotions than we realize? And when we focus that, I mean, we're talking about measuring the scientific evidence that ancient belief systems and ancient uh, initiations and ritual systems are more valid than we realized. Things like um, intentional prayer, um, focused meditation, clearing the mind out of these stories of out of body travel and affecting reality. Things like manifestation and the law of attraction, or we, we don't need to jump to too many conclusions, but it seems like with a real effort, the scientific data, at least of the MUPAS portal, is showing that this is possible and that we can do these things with our mind more like a Jedi or like someone from the X-Men with uh, psychic abilities. And we shouldn't be afraid of that. I think it's really cool that we're starting to reach an era of humanity where we can face this. So now the uh, screen recording, I've sped it back up again to 400 times speed it ran the rest of the time. And the whole reason that I'm showing this now is that it's back to full speed 400 times faster than normal reality. So you can see the microwaves are back to normal. Gamma rays are back to normal. Keep in mind that that camera of the clouds over there is not real. There is not a camera running at my house right now. That is just a fake image over there. Just looking at the data, the microwave, gamma wave, gamma rays and the magnetometer readings. So basically what happened to the sensor after this is I did the meditation. I felt like I went out of body. I felt like I definitely was there at the sensor and affecting it. And like I got results. I felt really confident about that. And then the meditation sort of drifted. I, I sort of started, um, started thinking of uh, the UFO in Hestelin the UFO landing, and I started thinking about um, some other things like uh, the recent findings about the Great Pyramids in Egypt and how there's been this uh, Chinese radar system that's detected anomalous plasma bubbles. And I had like a whole little imagination or vision about that, about the pyramids in Egypt that is kind of interesting. But basically, as the sensor went on, what ended up happening is the data stopped recording. So the live real time of the sensor kind of quit and then it jumped to um, just basically happened to reset. So by the time my meditation ended, it's like the whole sensor froze and quit recording the data. So after that, I got up, I logged in, I typed in the incident report, and this is going to be experiment number one of by location trying to go out of body, touch the MUPAS sensor. But there you have it. There is the results of the data. These are the screenshots. When you go back to the four hour report, you can see everything there. And then you also have um, 
the uh, evidence there in the microwaves, the other, the gamma radiation, the infrasound. We even have spikes and uh, all of it is just very compelling. So, all right, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for being a part of the MUPAS team on Patreon. And uh, we're gonna be going back to Norway to set up the sky cameras in the Hestelen Valley and hopefully catch a lot more data as the future comes. And this is an exclusive video just for the inner circle and the members of the MUPAS team. But I wanted to dig into the gateway process, the gateway experience, how it relates to remote viewing, out of body travel, and also CE5, the contact modality that everybody likes to talk about and use a lot. You can watch to learn this if you don't want to read the book. So I'm, I want to try and bring you guys this inside information as to what is really going on, how the government was making contact with extraterrestrials and got us to this point of disclosure.